Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Pastor Julius Raymond Kabida. He's a location pastor at Worship Harvest Ministries. He oversees eight Worship Harvest locations of 1,245 members. He's also the executive pastor of Worship Harvest Ministries and oversees the administrative functions of the movement. The ministry runs several businesses which include Harvest International School, Green Cafe, Harvest Finance Community Shop, and the Harvest Multipurpose Cooperative Society Limited. He's a chairman of HMC, a very fast-growing savings organization that has grown in leaps and bounds. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fearless stage, Pastor Julius Tobugo. So first class is perfect, and that is perfect. What? He brought his own sharing squad. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, man. Please. All right, all right, all right. Get back to your seats, guys. We need to wear this, man. Now, because, <laughs> Pastor Julius, I don't even think we had your name. Your cheering squad drowned out in the whole introduction. So the first thing I'm going to say, first of all, is I'm really glad that uh, you got a chance to meet Fearless and share some of your amazing story. Uh, but, but tell us who you are, because we, we missed everything. <laughs> Tell us a bit about, we'll talk a bit about what you do, but tell us about your family and maybe some of the things, some, something you're really passionate about. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, uh, Pastor M, for having me. Uh, first of all, I'm here because I'm a son. So, ma'am, mom, I want to send my special greetings to my spiritual parents, Apostle Mose and Pastor Ari. They have raised me yeah. into a, a great son to the point of even being here. Yeah. I, I feel, how, how am I in this place? Wow. But uh, because I am following a great man, Amen. a man of God, my disciple, and he knows I'm his disciple, and I know He's my disciple. He knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's not discovering him. No, he knows. He knows. <laughs> yeah, my name is Julius Raymond Kabugo. I am a pastor at Watch Harvest Ministry. Amen. Um, on the 26th of March this year, I planted a church in my community. Yeah. It's um, a local community. It is 140 kilometers away from Kampala. So every Sunday I go to minister okay. uh, to wow. those people. And God is doing amazing work down yeah. there. But let, let's come back to the church. But yes. I want to first start with passion. Yeah. Uh, there's something, you, you told me you're passionate, uh, you're passionate about business, but not just business, about discipleship in business. Tell us a bit about how you do that. Yeah, um, I did a business called Mustangy Foods. Wasted. Msingi food. Msingi food. Yeah. Uh, Msingi is Swahili for foundation. Swahili word for foundation. Yeah. And this business uh, was founded in December 2018. We are making just five years uh, this year in December. Yeah. Uh, initially, the idea was to, like perhaps many other people, to run their businesses, grow big, and take care of their families. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you had worked in, uh, in corporate before that, worked for the government, yes. before that, then re retired to enter into this business. Yes, I had worked with the government, Uganda Revenue Authority, for some years. Then I worked for Campania Capital Authority yeah. uh, with uh, the lady called Jennifer Samakulamsi, who is a born again Christian, very, very strong. In fact, because of her, I chose Christ. I gave my life to Christ. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Because uh, That's awesome. I observed the way she cut around herself, she had a mind of Christ. Yeah. And I liked, I decided everything about what she had. So I decided on the 2nd of December, 2012, I gave my life to Christ and I've never looked back. And here I am, I'm Amen. now a master. So you're, yeah. you're somebody who's your supervisor at work lives such a life that you yes. give. Just ask your neighbor, who is giving their life to Christ because <laughs> of you in your marketplace? Yeah, that's true. Some some of the lives some of the lives we live at work yeah. is sending people to hell. Yeah. <laughs> but you she sent you to heaven. Thank yeah. God for that woman. So yeah. so you joined this business. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you said you don't just want to grow it big. 
initially maybe that's what you would do because yeah. everybody would do that. Yeah, initially that was that was that's what I had in mind. But of course I've been around Watch Harvest for some time. Yeah. And Apostle has told us that um every time you, you build a business for yourself, it's going nowhere. Because I think like we've just had a couple of minutes ago, that God is looking for your faith, is searching for your faith. Yes. And faithfulness is how you use everything you're doing for the purpose of the kingdom yeah. and the kingdom of the body of Christ, the people. How are you helping everyone win at workplace? So one time, uh, <laughs> uh, Apostle gave me an opportunity to feature on the business garage, one of the ministries we have. And I just shared my story, the things I'm doing with my poultry. Basically, uh, me, I thought was just a, a featuring, share what you do, and you get back to your work. With a partial, a, a, yeah. a poultry business, basically. Exactly. Yeah. But what happened, that after that, I started receiving so many farmers coming to our farm to find out how especially we could help them learn and be better. Most of these people had actually lost a lot of money in this business. So what immediately got to my mind was that there are so many people out there that would like to see this kind of business, but unfortunately, they have no one to follow. Yeah. So I decided to be the person to be followed on this journey. So I, wow. I invited them in and we started training them uh, every first Monday of the month. So you come to the farm, we train them. We even changed our business model from going big to set up a center of excellence where they come, see what we do, and now they go back to their farms and do exactly what we do. Yeah. Now we have also challenged them to start doing what we do with them, with, other, with, with others. So currently we have around 50 farmers that we are working with. Wow. Uh, directly we are discipling around 15, and the 15 are discipling the others. <laughs> and it's growing incredibly, very so, fast, but also very well. One, one of the things I loved about that story is because many times we hear these things in church, but we don't know how they apply in the marketplace. We don't see the one-to-one. -one. Because I'm here, I want to grow a big poultry business. I want to become this multi, this conglomerate and to be big. But when you hear in church about discipleship and you say, let me change the model to adapt what I'm learning about the kingdom and to bring that spiritual reality into the physical. And so rather than try, trying to just blow up, I'm going to start discipling the farmers in my locality and then teaching them to disciple others. Second Timothy 2.2, as a business model. Exactly. Wow. Uh, and, and recently, Apostle started, uh, we call it POTS. Uh, it's training pastors over a thousand. I also started my version of training farmers every month. So I call them in to our farm, and I teach them, if you check our social media, I'm doing exactly what he does with the pastors, I do it with the farmers. So I just watch, see what he does, yeah. then I convert that into the marketplace, into our businesses. And like I said, it is working very, very, very well. So what we are seeing right now, um, farmers who had failed to make it, yeah. we have a lady who failed for over seven years. She invested money and all that money went to waste. But since she joined us two, two years ago, she's now making some really good money and she's growing very, very well. And in fact, she's one of the disciples I send out to, to go teach others, go inspect others, and literally help out one another. So, so one of the things, Pastor Julius, is that many of us are afraid of teaching, because basically what you're doing is taking your model and teaching it to others. The world tells us that's not what you do, because what you're doing then is taking that proprietary thing that gave you the competitive edge and sharing it with your neighbors. That sounds very counterintuitive. Not, not really. Well, that's what many people think. But when you go alone, you can't go so far. That's one. The other thing is, there's too much. I think the world is like heaven. There's, there's abundance there's of things. There's abundance of market. There's abundance of resources. Yeah. There's abundance of knowledge, skills. And by the way, we are also learning from them from one way or the other. Yeah. But well, the thing that we could be the limitation for some of the businessmen to share their, their skills, or rather their secrets, is the market. But since we started working with these farmers, we have got bigger markets than the ones we had before. Wow. And for me, that's the work of... So we're able to command more markets. Yeah, exactly. Because now you have more eggs or more chicken. Absolutely. We've seen uh, customers coming to us, men of 
So perhaps couldn't have considered us if we are working on our own. Yeah. But we've seen customers coming for us. We have received grants, big, big grants. The latest we have just received is worth approximately $150,000. And this money wow. is going to be used to support these farmers, to strengthen them, but also is making our company much bigger because they're giving us some resources to strengthen our capacity and also introduce a lot of things like a governance to make us a better company. But at the same time, we have moved away from thinking consumption because we have opened ourselves to bigger challenges to increase our production, we are now thinking manufacturing, industrialization. And so the next thing we are going to do, perhaps this year, is to go into producing powdered eggs because we are in eggs majorly. Powdered eggs. Powdered eggs. Yes. But at the same time, we are starting to think, what else can we do with these eggs? Yeah. And God is giving us a lot of incredible stuff. We are thinking about um, having bathing soap from eggs. Bathing soap. Oh, yes. Bathing soap. All right. We are thinking about snacks. We know that the drug manufacturing companies are looking for that product, the bakers. And because we are growing big, but most importantly, that we are conducting ourselves as a church. In fact, I call our business a church. Because we are a church, God is opening so many doors for us. Yes, and it's moving quite. I, I, I just incredible. think this could be the moment at Fearless when somebody finally gets this thing. That, that this discipleship thing is not a spiritual thing out there. That this is life. This is how believers are supposed to live. This is how we represent the king. Your business is a church. Ish. The business is a church. Ask your neighbor, are, we, uh, by the way, are you guys still around? I, I, I don't know if anyone is shaking. Like I'm, I'm feeling anointing in the house. But you guys are so quiet. I'm wondering, are you understanding what this man is saying? His business is a church. Remember yesterday, some people didn't stand up when he asked for pastors. I hope those people today will stand up when he ask. All right. Pastor, Pastor, so when I call you Pastor Julius, it's also your business title. Yeah. <laughs> because you're raising up, and, and I know that you're uplifting lives as well, because your business is causing others to prosper, which... Yes, that's true. Um, sometime in 2019, um, some very, very good people, they're not bad people, very good people <laughs> broke into our house, mm. and they wanted to take some items. I think they needed some items from our house. <laughs> so, uh, 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 well, so, so we had a house breaking. Yeah. And things, so went, and things actually went. Yeah. It was stolen, okay? Yeah. We went through the night. Um, and my beautiful wife had some kind of, some people outside the house. I don't know why, but for some reason, men sleep a lot that night, I think. <laughs> but wives are awake. Wives are the ones who wake up. So she, <laughs> she called me. She don't find him. There's some people outside. So indeed, when I sneak through the window, there are some younger people. They had managed to break into the house and pick some items, but we quickly mobilized some uh, security friends to come by and rescued us. So the following week, my very good friend, who is around here, Pastor Chris Kawesa, who we start the same certain community, uh, also had the perhaps different guys, but again, younger people breaking into his house at the same time. <laughs> Oh, wow. And at the time, we were in the same missional community. So uh, we were on the WhatsApp group of the community, yeah. our, our colleagues in the village. And the conversation on the, com the group was, let us look for money and get police into the community, buy land, build a police post, literally let us get guys with, with guns yeah. into, our, into our community to kind of you know, protect us. Protect, yes. But what was running in our mind on the contrary was, these guys were actually, they didn't actually come to, in their mind, they're not stealing. They are working. They went for work. And you want to assume that they told their wives that we've gone for work. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem was, it's a wrong work. That they're doing a wrong thing. Yeah. It's a wrong job. And what they needed is to be guided into doing the right thing. So we decided to start an initiative uh, for mobilizing younger people to teach to them, to disciple them, but also show them the way. And we quickly put together a group of around 100 younger people, wow. youth. And we encouraged them, of course, Watch Pavist has empowered us a lot. There's a lot of information, content, which we use to teach them, disciple them. You already them. have content from church that you're using. Okay. To ju you're just taking what you're learning 
at Worship Harvest yeah, exactly. and teaching it and to teaching young people. Them. So we taught them spiritual, we connected with them. For some reason, they've been in the same village for so many years, but they didn't even know each other. It's the first time they got to know about one another. And we challenged them to start saving some money. Just uh, 2,000 UGX, that's around, I think, 60 approximately. Kenyan shillings, 60 shillings to 20,000 shillings. That's Uganda shillings, very yeah. little money. Before we knew, perhaps within a year or less, they had saved over 100 million Ugandan shillings. Wow. As we're going to do the maths there, that's about foot, uh, what's 100 million? Yeah, in, in 100, that is... Uh, in about 3, 3, 3 million, million Kenyan shillings. Yeah, 3 million Kenyan About 30,000 US dollars yes. used to be, yeah. Yeah, okay. And then we started discipling them into starting businesses. So they did start businesses, and right about now, many of them are now actually not just working their businesses, they are employing others. Men of wow, they have businesses, they are working, they are border border cyclists, they have grocery shops, they have electric, uh, uh, all sorts of stuff within the community. Uh, wow. But there are these two um, who I picked interest in and I decided to uh, employ them uh, with our company, Sage Foods Limited. And so they're working with you, they're working with us. One of them is the general manager. The other is the sales manager. Wow. And actually, they are around. They are here. They came for four. Oh, wow. Yeah. Are they here? <laughs> one is Patrick. Are they in the house? Oh, there's one standing. Just wave forward. Oh, yeah. my goodness. This is Patrick. He's our general manager. And then Cedric, I think, is our sales manager. Wow. Patrick has been the committee for so many years. And to put it clearly, life had become very hard for him. Yeah. But right about this time, he's... Uh, Discipled, he's a mission community leader at Wash Pavis Gayaza, he's leading over 40 people, he's at Fearless. <laughs> 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 yeah, and, and, so many, and uh, so many others. So, you know, it's amazing for me because what you're talking about is fruitfulness all around. Yes. So, you're not, you're not a Christian in church on Sunday. Yes. But it's fruitful, kingdom fruitfulness everywhere. Exactly. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah so uh, the, their lives are being turned around, uh, but not just them, so many others. Their lives have flipped. And to make things much better for us, we no longer have guys jumping over our fences to start and steal from us. <laughs> and the other guys went wow. ahead to actually establish their police unit. But to say the least, it is useless because, because there's no work, there's for, them. No work for them to <laughs> go to him and did the better work of transforming oh, people. Oh my God. Yes. This, is, this is how the kingdom works. This is how the kingdom operates. Remember the solution for the broken world, discipleship. The solution for the world that is rebellious, discipleship. It's not a police post and putting a big fence around your house is discipleship. discipleship. Tell us about it, because in the middle of all these things you do, you're also a pastor. You say that you, you lead a church uh, that you planted Yes. In your village, in my village, yes. and you travel there. How many hours every Sunday to get there? In the weekend, me, it takes. Me, I leave my home at 3 a.m. Um, because I need to be there by 6 a.m. in the morning. We have to pray. It's a younger church. Uh, they have not been in church for some time, so they need to quickly catch up. Because I mean, they need to <laughs> catch up with the movement. The movement is very very fast. <laughs> <laughs> So by six years there for prayer. Yeah, I pray with them for two hours. Then we do Bible study for 30 minutes. I teach them about business. They didn't know that they're business people. They're actually business people because they have their small things. For them, they thought it's the smallest thing, but it's a business. So I'm teaching them how to grow, you know, those uh, small business units. And then we have service from 10 to midday. Then after midday, I meet the men. My wife meets uh, the ladies. Um, between uh, three to five, I meet the leaders, then we drive back to Kampala. So in Kampala, of course, I have work. I did the business I've just talked about. And, and you also lead several other churches in addition Yes, like Worship Harvest. Yes, I'm a network leader, Apostle, recently. <laughs> By the way, the way I was appointed a network leader is something perhaps I've maybe I would never experience. I think that's how God does things. Yeah. You wake up thinking of something different, but by the end of the day, you're totally something different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's faithfulness with the small. Yeah. You talked about that. And then God 
you know, when you're faithful with small, you're faithful with big. And Amen. I think that's what your apostle saw with you. He saw you being faithful. Yeah. And, but anyway, on 2nd of May uh, is when apostle appointed me to lead a network of churches. And I was so privileged because he gave me the opportunity to lead the same corridor where I come from. It's from Busega to Liantonde, and that's the same region where I was born. Such an incredible opportunity for me. And, and so how many, and churches, how many churches in that? There are eight churches. Now. Eight, eight churches. Yes, there are eight churches. Amen. Yeah. We had, we had six in May, but recently we planted two churches to add on to them. The month of May. I love it. Yes. Including the one you started. Personally. Yes. This one of those. Yes. So so in addition to being a pastor of multiple congregations, overseeing pastors of multiple congregations, leading your own congregation, is something else that you do for worship harvest, uh, in terms of being an executive role as well. I fell asleep. Uh, 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 the other things I do, um I am the executive overseer of the movement directly supporting apostle on all administrative related activities of the movement but at the same time i lead our saving group is called the harvest Mart purpose cooperative and, um, so um, i'm the chairman of that organization uh, yeah <laughs> i think your member you brought your members here <laughs> so these are all our members oh, that's so in this organization so and I'm grateful to them because without them, I can't be the chairman. You know, they'll have to be serving all their time. <laughs> yes. So, so you are executive pastor in charge of all the operations of the movement, but uh, very particularly the, the business units that you run. And I wanted to talk about, you, you mentioned the, 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 the Worship Harvest Multipurpose Cooperative. And, and tell us a bit about that, because one of the things that has intrigued me for that is that you talked about with the young men Economic, a spiritual revival, social revival, which is where the, the groups come in, where you're bringing, building relationships they didn't have. Yes. And then you talked about economic revival. And that as a movement, there is, that is a sphere we need to engage as God's people. And as a movement, this is one of the vehicles that God is using at Worship Harvest to empower God's people. Yes. Tell us about how that has gone. Well, it has been a very good journey. And even what that is, that, yep. that, that, that body that you're, you're leading. Yeah, the... This organization is meant to mobilize, motivate, encourage members of Worship Harvest to save money on a monthly basis, also on a daily basis, because they save on a daily basis. And the idea, which Apostle has taught us a lot, and even written a book, of saving money as and when, actually on a daily basis, weekly, is coming to uh, pass, is coming to life through this organization. Yeah. Uh, in 2021, that was around Feb, is when I became, when Apostle gave me the opportunity to lead this organization. We've been around for five years with an organization called Harvest Investment Club. With an investment club, the purpose is you set it up to achieve a specific goal. I'll take an example. If you want to buy land, you start what you call an investment club. Yeah. When you buy land, you're expected to cross unless when you have another specific goal. So when Apostle gave me the opportunity to lead, then the Harvest Investment Club, I did suggest to him that how about we turn it into something that can live forever, but also allow us to venture into some other sectors and other businesses to which he approved. And then we converted it into the Harvest Smart Purpose Cooperative. In February 2021, we had 200 members. 200 members. Okay. And approximately 17 million Kenyan shillings. That's around 500 million Kenyan shillings. Wow. Uh, when we started. And so right for, about so 17 million is about. Hundred seventy thousand dollars, I guess. Yes. Yeah. But uh, right about this time, we have two thousand one hundred and eighty members uh, serving with that. Wow. So and ten ten times. Yes. Ten two hundred to two thousand. Yes. In two years. In two years. Two years. In two years. And um, approximately three hundred million Kenyan shillings in eight assets. Wow. Over uh, three hundred million Kenyan shillings. Yes. Somebody. 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 Three million. Three million dollars. That's two two point. 2.2 million dollars million dollars approximately yes wow yes so yeah. this is what the assets that this corporate has made yeah, that's that's through the savings of the people of worship okay i think we can clap at that yes that's huge 
Um, that's not a small one of us. Uh, this is, you know, this is, a year, this is a time of COVID when people are recovering from business uh, challenges and all that. And to be able to mobilize that kind of resource in that short time is nothing short of amazing. And, and, and so with this, what are some of the things that you're doing with the cooperative? Uh, what are some of the things that you're able to do with the money that they're raising? How, how are you able to invest that money? Yeah, we're doing a lot of things. One of them, we are helping our members on land. And since uh, we started in two years, we have sold 280 80 plots of land, helping over 200 members to own land, many of them for the very first time. Wow. We have also earned our members a lot of return on investment because over the last two years, we paid a return of 20%. Every year. Savings, so that's 20 percent return every year yes so that wow. was wow. um so you pay a dividend to the members yes we pay a dividend wow. at the end of the year so we've been giving them returns consistent over the last two years of 20 percent of course the most important thing that we have also kept their value their money safe it's all available yeah and we build systems that will make sure that's just going to help us continue growing so it's helped them build their savings exactly yeah we have uh created four job employment opportunities in four years. Our CEO is somewhere available. She's right there. <laughs> uh, she's doing a, a very good job. Uh, just last month, uh, I remember in February 2021, our savings were 40 million Ugandan shillings. Uh, last month, it was 762 million, wow. just one month. Wow. And she's doing well together with our, our team. So mobilizing uh, the savings, members yes, to save. We yeah. are mobilizing the savings. Uh, the other thing that we are doing, we set up products to support our members, especially on school fees. Uh, sometime Apostle, you know Apostle is a rapper? So yeah. 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 <laughs> we want another rap to do you. <laughs> so he was rapping in a song uh, called Mufuku Kasoma. He's a, encouraging and comparing the youth to go back to school. Yeah. And we sat and thought, what could stop Mufuboka from going to school, a youth from going to school, and what came into our mind was school fees. Wow. So on one of his birthdays, we launched a product called In Honor of Him, in honor of him. We launched a product called uh, Soma, where we encourage you. Soma means go to school. Go to school. Which is, it's, that's the same here. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yes. Just, uh, so where we encourage parents to save money with us for school fees. In the event that the child is going back to school and you don't have enough money, we actually advance you and we send the fees to the school, then for you continue sending in whatever monthly instruments you can yeah. until when you, you, you clear. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But also oh. practical solutions. Practical solutions, yes. But also we are moving into some other sectors. Uh, Wash Harvest is blessed with so many initiatives. We have future housing where we have a vision of uh, building 10,000 units. We have a housing, bank, un housing units. Housing units. Yeah. We have a bank. Uh, that is already working, but in formative stages, which we want to grow to something bigger. In Uganda, most of the banks don't belong to Ugandans. We believe this is going to be one of the few banks that are going to be locally owned. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Wow. So we, we're now moving to start using part of our money in the cooperative to invest into these initiatives to now growing them into something uh, much bigger. Wow. And we know that through such uh, intervention, through such investments, we are going to create so many employment opportunities, especially for the younger people wow. in our country, in our church, and elsewhere. Wow. So it is preparing us Amen. to do a lot much more. Because usually the challenge is having resources available to invest in initiatives that can perhaps yeah. you know, support uh, the economy of the church, the economy of the movement, the economy of the country. But now that we've managed to mobilize our resources, we can do a lot more to pick up those initiatives and they become more relevant and more supportive. You know, that's so community. powerful because we talked about that last year, Fearless, how certain communities have learned by mobilizing the resources within the community, they're able to advance uh, every member, but also advance the community as well. And I think this is what we're just seeing a demonstration of how this works, a practical demonstration. One of the things you said when I asked, we talked about how it's important, it's a cooperative because cooperatives bring people who are like-minded, have similar values, are disciples. For you guys, it's people who are disciples in the house. And one of the things you do is very radical because you said you tithe the prophets back into the church. And you said if a member came and wasn't 
or if somebody came, joined and wasn't a member or wasn't uh, uh, a believer, then that would be a problem. But because you have similar values, you can do certain kingdom things that other people couldn't do. Yeah, absolutely, because we cannot forget the fact that it's God who is helping us on this journey. And I think it would be sad and very unfortunate for us to not to recognize that, that God is doing for us. And one of the things we did is to make sure that the members of this cooperative are all members of Worship Harvest because we understand, we know the values, and we know what is expected of each one of us. In fact, if any member perhaps disagreed with such a practice of tithing on our profits, in my opinion, that would be the last day going to be a member of the organization <laughs> because we'll be preaching what is fundamental, what is very, very, very important for us as an organization that is um, living to the principles of the kingdom for which we so much believe in. Wow. So it's therefore important that when you're building these organizations, you're mindful of who your members are. If you open up such an initiative to everyone, I believe at some point, sooner or later, you're going to find yourself in quite a very complicated situation yeah. that will, will, might compromise wow. the going concern of such an organization. So, so part of the reason I brought that up is because maybe there are pastors in the house who are like, how can we join? And I'm sure you've had those requests. Can we join this thing and get the 20% for our members? And, and I know that you told me, unfortunately, that's not the practice. But you also said something which was encouraging that I think I'd love for you to say to any churches or pastors who are here. Um, yeah, what, what you are trying to do is support other churches because we recognize the fact that this is the body of Christ. The difference is perhaps we are in different um, movements or churches for that matter and we may have different values. There's, there are principal values like tithing. I, be, I believe it's the cutting across. Yeah. But um, we believe that we need all churches and I know we've shared this with the Apostle that would like to support the rest of the churches to start their own initiatives where they can save uh, money, having their members saving together and become perhaps just like we are with the HMC. So we are opening up ourselves to receiving them, to disciple them, to mentor them, to coach them, to start. Some of the churches have reached out, but many others have not. But also because over the last years, we've been so engaged with building this initiative. We didn't have a lot of time to give away. Yeah. At the same time, we needed to first understand how it works. We are now in a position where we can ably support others to start, you know, such serving groups. And I also know that uh, this is the way to go. Yeah, because uh, recently um, the government of Uganda was looking out for money. Uh, I think, you know, governments borrow, borrow a lot. They're always borrowing, yeah. And the Bible says that we should lend to nations. Come on. Yeah, so... Come on. <laughs> We so as, as soon as we learned about it, you we nation. immediately... Your uh, first nation. Yes, our first nation. We sent out some money to... To rescue our country. Wow. But at, at the same time, we are saving our money to organizations that we know are also leading to, uh, to government. So I imagine that if more movements, more churches come together, it's just a matter of time before we'll be doing this at a much bigger scale, yeah. at a much larger scale of very big nations Come on. meet their, meet their needs. I love that. Yes. So one of the things that Pastor Julius, uh, I, I, um, and Abmo, with your permission, I know you're my brother and you love me, so um, <laughs> I, I would like to ask that we have a sign-up sheet for any church that would love to organize a Zoom call Maybe you have somebody who's in your operations or you yourself are interested. And Pastor, Pastor Julius has, uh, on, on this stage, your, your, your bishop has said yes. Uh, he is willing to uh, have a Zoom call and just begin a process of what would it look like, what, does it, what, the, what is the structure. Imagine if every church was a center of economic revival. Imagine if every church was a place where there was kingdom prosperity. Imagine if we would stop talking about as poor as a church mouse. Why, why, why are church mice poor? Why? Why can they talk about church mo um, mosque mouse? Why is a mouse in your church poor? <laughs> okay, sorry, let me move away from that. So Pastor Julius is kindly, uh, I, I think that will be in order. So uh, let me just ask at the info table, uh, please have a sheet there, and any pastor, any church, just 
write a, a contact that we can put together a Zoom together. Uh, we'll be happy to be part of that as well. And let's learn together. Let's begin to just see how can we actually learn best practices from different churches? And how can we help each church become a thriving center of economic revival? Because guess what happens? If Worship Harvest is prospering, if Harvest Family Church is wash, uh, prospering, City of Transformation is prospering, Purpose Center is prospering, at one point we'll be in a place where we can even begin to build those super institutions. That's right. Where now we lend to the UN. We'll become donors at a very high level. Yes. And people listen. Let me tell you something. People respect wealth. Yes. The people of the world, they listen when you have wealth. Yes. That's and I believe that this is a time when the Lord is saying, it's time to change the narrative. Let's begin yeah. to do it differently. So, Pastor Jesus, I'd love for you to pray for us because I feel like anointing needs to flow in this house. You are the entrepreneur who is a pastor. There are many people in this church who are entrepreneurs. They just need to take that step and understand that they're supposed to be pastors. Your career is your place of ministry. Your, your business is actually your, your church. And you need to start discipling in that space. Your business model needs to start reflecting the model of the kingdom. That's and I, I would love for you to just pray that God would start to open eyes and give divine ideas about that. And then secondly, that you just pray for us as churches that the Lord would allow us to become springs of economic revival. Is that okay, people? Can we just stand up and receive the blessing of this great man? Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity to bring together the body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus, because you love us. We know, Lord, that we are stewards of your resources, we are stewards of your economy. We are stewards of your people. We have an obligation, oh Jesus, to turn them to you when they are transformed, when they are better, oh God. Father, we know that making disciples of nations is going to need resources. We need to go to countries. We need to go to Asia. We need to go to South America. We need to go everywhere. We want to do this if we don't have resources. We need money to buy planes. We need money to fly out. Thank we need you. money to pay for tickets. Thank you. The Christians that are here, they came because they could afford paying for tickets. I know, Lord, that many of them stayed back home because they perhaps couldn't afford coming. Father, we need everyone to have the capacity to come and receive you, to be in your presence, Thank you. to learn from you, to take the gospel far, Far to nations are gone. We need to plant churches that give life. We need to empower leaders that are going to serve you. We need to assist the poor, oh God. We need to care for the sick. We need to educate the next generation. But for us to do that, we need resources. Yes, sir. We need money. We need wealth. Yes. Father, when you're here, you did that. You demonstrated to us. You fed multitudes. You healed the sick. Thank you. you planted the churches, and that is a sign, but you are worthy. We follow you, Jesus, and because we follow you, we ought to be like you. We ought to be worthy. We ought to have the money. We ought to manage this economy, to make this economy thrive, to live from heaven to earth, to give, to bless. Father, I want to pray for everyone in this, this place that fearless that today, effective today, their life will not be the same. Thank you, Lord. Know. They are going to buy land. Yes. They are going to build homes. Yes. They are going to own cars. Yes. They are going to be of influence at workplaces, in their communities. You know. They are going to assist the poor. Yes. They are going to take people to hospitals. Yes. Because they are going to, to afford that. Yes. You are going to bless them with resources. Yeah. Father, I pray for your body, the body of Christ, the church to embrace initiatives like HMC, yes. to embrace initiatives like Future Housing, to embrace initi initi initiatives like Harvest Finance, to own banks, to own, to own companies, to own saving groups and so many others that will bring together your people to work together yeah. to do incredible things in your name. Father, I want to pray for the businessmen, especially those that have not planted churches. Yeah to take this serious, yes. to plant churches, to turn their businesses into altars for Christ, yes. 
to pray, to disciple people, to teach people about the word, but also to teach them how to do great businesses. Businesses that are ethical. Businesses that are reflection of your character, of your goodness, yes. of your love, of transformation, of restoration of souls of people. Businesses that can produce good, good, good ethical goods yes. with eth ethical practices. Businesses that don't, don't be bribes, that are not corrupt, yes. that live to your principles. Father, the greatest commission in my view. of making disciples of all nations is not just for pastors. It is not just in churches, but everywhere. We are all supposed to make disciples of all nations in our businesses, in our homes, in churches, everywhere we go. We are called upon to make disciples of all nations. Yeah. Father, we pray that effective today, we are going to live out your desire. We are going to live out this commandment we are going to obey you. We are going to make you disciples of all nations. The same way we have disciples at Masinj, may all other businesses represented here have disciples Amen. everywhere. Amen. Everywhere. People that will serve you, people that will be after your heart. Amen. Father, thank you for what you have shared. Thank you that you've been with us. Thank you for this great opportunity that you've given me to share what you're doing uh, in our country. Father, I thank you for what he does. Thank you so much for Apostle, for giving us an opportunity to serve. Thank you so much for Pastor Ari. Thank you so much for all the pastors from Watch Harvest. Thank you so much for all the pastors that are here. But in the, again, God, thank you so much for Pastor M, for putting this together, for bringing us together to share into the incredible thing that you're doing. And thank you, God, for all the churches that have been represented that are doing your work. Father, we are grateful. We've had a good time and you know we've gone to learn a lot and when you go back we are going to continue living out the amazing things the great things that you've sent us to do in your people amongst your people in your nations amongst the nations in your name we are great amen amen and amen